Hi, it's Katrina. From new species of animals to what space sounds like, here are nine amazing recent discoveries. Number nine, new shark species. Recently, scientists discovered not one, but two new species of shark. You'd think that given all the technology we have, that we'd have found all the big animals there are to know. But the ocean is still full of surprises. They've been affectionately named Kajas and Anna's six-scale saw sharks, respectively, and were discovered during a research project investigating small-scale fisheries. The new species of six-gilled saw shark were found off the coast of Madagascar in Tanzania, and they are pretty weird. Saw sharks are known for their strange, elongated snouts that are lined with sharp teeth of varying sizes. Shaped like a saw, they use it like one too, swiping it from side to side, shredding their prey into bite-sized pieces. If you look at them from below, they look even weirder. Incredibly, this discovery happened as most good discoveries do, by accident. Dr. Ruth Leaney spotted the first of these sharks, but she was actually looking for sawfish. She received a message, but when she looked at the picture, she could see that it wasn't a sawfish, but a saw shark. A quick way to tell them apart is by looking for the mustaches, or barbells, that saw sharks have. Saw sharks generally only get to be about three feet long, as far as we know, but there is a lot we clearly still don't know about them. The research team is concerned that even though we have just found them, they are most likely getting overfished, and their populations are already at risk. The discovery of these two species reinforces how much we still don't know about our oceans and what else we might find. Number 8. The Sound of a Supernova There is no sound in deep space for the most part, but some of the events that happen there would make rather interesting or perhaps terrifying noises if they could, according to a recent NASA study. Thanks to the agency's new data sonification program, it's now possible to experience what some space phenomena would theoretically sound like, including that of an exploding supernova. Researchers at NASA's Chandra X-ray Center calculated these noises by translating light frequencies from some of their most iconic images into different sound pitches. Included among the samples is a crab nebula, a supernova remnant powered by a windy neutron star. Blue and white light, or X-ray light, is represented by brass instruments, while purple is reflected in strings, and woodwinds play the part of pink, or infrared light, with all the sounds converging at the nebula's center. Another video shows two clusters of galaxies colliding, a phenomenon known as a bullet cluster, happening 3.7 billion light-years from Earth. This particular collision is hailed for giving us the first ever direct evidence of the existence of black matter, and now we know what it would sound like if it could actually make noise. The third video features the explosion of Supernova 1987A, which received its name based on the year its light first reached Earth. Unlike the other videos, the sound does not simply travel from left to right, but in a circular path. While these discoveries are not necessarily groundbreaking, it helps us to understand what is happening in space in a more relatable way. Number 7. South America's First Diplodocid In 2014, scientists in Patagonia, Argentina announced the discovery of a new sauropod species, Lencupal laticauda. It's another long-necked relative of Apatosaurus and Diplodocus, and it is the first of its kind ever found in South America. This dinosaur was actually tiny compared to the others of its group, called the Diplodocids, and it was possibly the youngest member. Diplodocids are best known for being giants with whiplash tails that they would use to defend themselves. This little guy lived around 140 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous period, which was much later than its relatives found in North America, Africa, and Europe, who lived during the Jurassic period. And when I say little, it's all relative, because El Laticauda reached about 30 feet long, as opposed to its cousins, who sometimes grew over 66 feet long. Scientists think it was the smallest of the bunch. El Laticauda lived on the supercontinent of Gondwana in a semi-arid habitat near a large desert, according to paleontologist Pablo Gallina, who spoke with Live Science. When the bones were first discovered, Gallina didn't have much hope since they were pretty damaged by erosion. But once the bones were out of the ground, they realized they had found something very unique. Only eight full vertebrae were recovered, but this animal's vertebrae had a different shape than its other family members, and Gallina and his team were able to determine it was a new species. Diplodocids lived all over the globe, and for a much longer time period than anybody knew. 
This new find is a testament to just how successful this group of gigantic animals used to be. Number 6. Lost Islands New research shows that a submerged stretch of land called Doggerland partially survived an ancient tsunami around 6200 BC. Doggerland once connected Great Britain and the Netherlands, but now sits at the bottom of the North Sea. Known as the Storega Tsunami, the massive wave happened after Norway's continental shelf collapsed underwater roughly 500 miles to the north. Researchers previously believed that the tsunami submerged Doggerland entirely, but an analysis of sediment cores indicates that parts of the landmass survived and that people continued to inhabit the newly formed islands for thousands of years afterward. Study co-author and archaeologist Vincent Gaffney summed up the situation in a live science interview, stating, If you were standing on some of that coastline on the day it happened, it would be a bad day for you. However, that did not mean it was the end for Doggerland. To understand the context of what happened, it helps to rewind back to when Doggerland appeared around 12,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age, when the northern ice cap retreated. Within 2,000 years, the region became a rich and varied hunting and fishing ground consisting of lagoons, marshes, forests, rivers, and lakes. The recent study revealed that by the time the Storega tsunami hit, rising sea levels had already likely submerged most of Doggerland, but some parts of it remained above water as islands for a long time to come. Dubbed the Dogger Archipelago by the research team, this group of islands, as well as a raised central section of the territory called Dogger Island, sank roughly 1,000 years after the catastrophic tsunami amid a warming climate. Perhaps the most exciting new discovery resulting from the study is the possibility that the people who inhabited Dogger Island and the Dogger Archipelago may have helped spread agriculture to what is now Britain from the European mainland. Scientists now suspect the area might be home to an underwater Stone Age settlement, which would help prove their theory and, of course, provide more answers. Now, the search is on. Number 5. Poisonous Rats For most people, a rabbit-sized rat sounds terrifying enough on its own. But one rodent species, the African crested rat, is not only huge, its fur contains large concentrations of deadly toxins. Just a few milligrams could potentially kill a human. The crested rat is the only known mammal that gets its poison exclusively from a plant. According to a recent study, it chews on bark from the poison arrow tree, mixing the toxin with its saliva. Then, while grooming, it coats specialized furs on its back with the mixture. The species is found throughout the woodlands of East Africa, including Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia, Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda. Researchers long believed that crested rats were poisonous, but honestly had no idea because they are incredibly difficult to trap or get close enough to observe them. They got one step closer in 2011 when scientists witnessed one specimen engaging in the bark chewing and fur licking behavior. But this was not enough to prove that the habit is widespread among the species. So for the newer study, researchers managed to capture 25 crested rats. They temporarily kept the animals captive and through surveillance footage, witnessed 10 of the creatures chewing on bark and then licking their fur. But how do they not get poisoned? It's believed that the species' complex, four-chambered stomach prevents the rats from becoming sick from the poison, and that their toxicity is most harmful to predators that attack by biting, such as hyenas and big cats. The team also discovered, to their surprise, that crested rats are monogamous and spend up to half their time with their mate, as opposed to the previously held belief that the rodents are solitary. And even more interestingly, the application of toxins to the fur is not a shared activity between couples. Each one licks their own poison onto themselves. Despite this study, mystery still surrounds this elusive poisonous rat that is very rarely seen. Number 4. Record-breaking Deep Sea Swarm A swarm of 115 cutthroat eels recently broke the unique world record for being the largest number of fish ever spotted at one time in the abyssal ocean, a perpetually dark layer that sits between 9,800 and 19,700 feet beneath the water's surface. The deep dwellers were spotted near an international mining hotspot in the clarion clipperton Zone, or the CCZ, an expanse of seafloor running from Hawaii almost to Mexico, when scientists used a small amount of bait to coax them into view. We had never seen reports of such high numbers of fishes in the sparsely populated, food-limited deep sea. 
Biological oceanographer Astrid Leitner said in a statement, The fascinating discovery is heightening already present concerns about what scientists call a deep-sea gold rush in a region rich with rare metals and elements that are in high demand. As mining companies swarm to the area to tap into their prospects, researchers are increasingly worried about the survival of some of the world's most important, yet most overlooked ecosystems, the ones we can't really see. Discoveries like this are helping to bring much-needed attention to the array of creatures that exist in a part of the ocean we normally think of as barren and lifeless. Number 3. Submerged Supervolcano A newly published study suggests that there may be an enormous supervolcano lurking beneath Alaska's Aleutian Islands, citing a recently discovered massive crater as evidence that four or more of the region's underwater volcanoes are linked together. Geophysicist John Power, who works at the U.S. Geological Survey's Alaska Volcano Observatory, said that if the supervolcano had erupted at any point over the last several thousand years, the effects on the planet would be profound, disrupting societies worldwide. Nobody wants a repeat of 536 AD. Several pieces of evidence that seemed unrelated at first glance led to the discovery, according to Washington, D.C.-based volcanologist Diana Roman from the Carnegie Institution for Science. In fact, the volcanoes that scientists believe may make up a supervolcano appear rather ordinary, but the evidence points toward the existence of a 12.4-mile caldera, which includes a ring of six submerged volcanoes with a 427-foot deep depression in the middle. There are other signs indicating the presence of a supervolcano, including data gleaned from analyses of micro-earthquake patterns, satellite gravity data, and the presence of volcanic gases. This possibly means that there are up to six volcanoes in the identified region that are all sourced from a shared magma chamber. One of them, Mount Cleveland, has erupted between 60 and 70 times since 2001. The team's next step is to conduct more research to confirm the caldera's existence and to determine when the supervolcano last erupted. Number 2. New Blob Species NOAA scientists recently announced the first-ever identification of a marine species based solely on high-definition deep-sea footage. Formerly named Duobrachium sparksae, the newly described creature is a cetenophore, a strange gelatinous blob-like lifeform. It was first spotted off the Puerto Rican coast by a remotely operated vehicle called the Deep Discoverer in 2015. It's less than 0.04 inches or 1 millimeter long, and close-up images show that it's distinctive from other cetenophore species. We don't have the same microscopes we would in a lab, but the video can give us enough information to understand the morphology in detail, such as the location of their reproductive parts and other aspects, NOAA marine biologist Alan Collins said in a statement. Three members of the species, which has a bulbous body and two long tentacles, were filmed nearly two and a half miles beneath the ocean surface. Oceanographer Mike Ford, who referred to the animal as unique and beautiful, said it moved like a hot air balloon attached to the seafloor on two lines, maintaining a specific altitude above the seafloor, adding that researchers are unsure whether one of the deep-dwelling cetenophores was attached to the seabed, although it looked like it was. All three specimens were observed within six and a half feet from the bottom. There are around 200 described cetenophore species, and the use of underwater footage is extremely important, given the difficulty of physically collecting specimens. The researchers who conducted the study on D. sparksae reported that they didn't receive any pushback regarding the validity of their claims, but identifying new species based on video is admittedly a controversial practice, meaning that future discoveries may be met with more opposition from the scientific community. Number 1. A mountainous growth spurt It looks like the Swiss Alps are growing noticeably fast. A new study found evidence of a growth spurt, challenging the findings of two previous studies, which claim that the mountain range is not eroding or changing in size at all. If you like to go skiing, the slopes are getting taller. After analyzing the isotopes in sand from 350 rivers throughout the European Alps, an international team found that in certain areas, particularly in the Eastern Alps, the mountains are eroding rapidly, in other words, shrinking. Meanwhile, in the Western Alps, erosion and uplift are balanced. But the Central Alps are pushing upward faster than they are eroding, resulting in growth to the tune of 31 inches every 1,000 years. This may not sound like a lot, but in geological terms, it is. The team found that a mountain slope and topography affect its erosion, 
but rain, snow, and steep landscapes do not have a measurable impact, leaving them with the need to conduct more research to determine what other factors may be at play. Why are they growing so tall? Thanks for watching! Remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let me know which discovery was your favorite. Mine was definitely the sharks. See you next time! Bye!